Good morning, everyone. Morning, welcome. My name is Nick Wallace. Uh, I'm the Director of Admissions. You might remember my voice for, on your voicemail for some of you uh, to call to admit you. Um, it's so great to see so many of your faces. Welcome to our March Campus Preview Weekend for 2015. Uh, you're going to get a lot of information over the next uh, day and a half and meet a lot of people. You already met one uh, big University of Minnesota luminary in Goldie Gopher. You've probably taken some pictures with him, and uh, I'm sure uh, Goldie's excited to see you too. So uh, welcome. Uh, at first, I'd like to start by introducing some folks that'll uh, be helping to make your weekend uh, really enjoyable and informative. Uh, first back there is uh, Kate Snowden. Uh, she's our Associate Director of Admissions. I'd also like to introduce uh, Hallie Prest uh, and Allie Hilding, our Admissions Counselors. Uh, you've probably heard from them uh, as well, uh, calling and emailing you uh, as well over the past few weeks. Uh, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask me or uh, one of them or any of our student ambassadors. Uh, uh, they're all the ones wearing uh, Minnesota uh, uh, t-shirts. Uh, and then finally, I'd like to introduce uh, the Dean of the Law School, David Whitman, uh, to give you a welcome. Uh, please join me in giving uh, Dean Wilk uh, Whitman a welcome. So good morning, everybody, and welcome. It's great to see all of you here. Um, it's taken a long time for you to get here, not so much from our perspective, but from yours, 17 years or more of formal education. And for most of you, the next three years will be the final step in your educational career and the start of a new career in uh, the law. And we think it's a wonderful opportunity and a great career path, but we want to give you an opportunity to talk to the people who really know what law school is and that's the group sitting behind me, it's our student panel, and we're going to get to them in just a minute or so. But now I think it's time to reflect a little bit on why you're here. And you've worked hard, right? Obviously, you're an accomplished group. You know, the median GPA in this group puts you among uh, peers of the top 10 law schools in the country. You've got LSATs uh, that are pretty close behind. So you've worked hard, you've succeeded, you got where you wanted to be. But maybe it's time to reflect a little bit, why are you here? So I'll tell you why you're here. You're here because you believe in the rule of law. You want to strengthen justice. You want to promote um, uh, justice for everyone in our society. You want to do good for others. At least that's what you told us in your applications. <laughs> and I'm certain that was all true. Don't worry. I said the same thing in my application. But now you're here, and you're admitted, so you, can, you don't have to worry about that so much. But it's important to think about what do you really want to do with a law degree. And you could be forgiven you know, for thinking maybe you're a little bit uncertain. Uh, after all, if you read the newspapers, something I strongly discourage these days, but there's been this endless series of stories in you know, small outlets like the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal about how difficult law is and how it isn't uh, a good return on investment anymore and people should steer away from law school. And I, I think that's wrong for two reasons. So the first reason is, as a factual matter, it's certainly true. Law school is expensive. Right? Students incur a lot of debt often when they're attending law school. But I think it remains a great career path. What's happened is that, so you know it was true a few years ago when we were in the era of the incredibly shrinking economy, jobs were scarce, and they're still near, not nearly as plentiful as they were 10 years ago. Now, I'm sure you know that, everyone's told you that. But it's getting better. Hiring is picking up. The National Association of Law Placement just sent us a memo uh, a day or two ago talking about how hiring is strengthening now. One of the reasons is that the law firms have adapted, right? The economy is recovering. Law firms have restructured the way they're doing business. Uh, hiring is improving. The other thing that's happened is that law schools have been shrinking. So we and most other law schools are taking, uh, entering classes that are quite a bit smaller than they used to be. So a few years ago, maybe 46,000 students graduated from law school nationally. And this year, maybe it'll be 36,000 or so students graduating from law schools around the country. That's a big difference. That means there are much, far fewer students competing for the same number of jobs as there were in the past. And if you look at the economic studies, and there have been some recent studies, they conclude that, in fact, there's an enormous earnings premium for a law degree. So just as uh, university graduates do much better than uh, high school graduates in terms of lifetime earnings, law school graduates do much better than university graduates in terms of lifetime earnings. And that's still true. And it's true. They, they looked not just at historical patterns, but they looked at recent graduates, and by and large, people are still doing very well. And if you're a graduate of a school like this one, you have an excellent set of opportunities awaiting you at the end of three years. It's going to be a hard three years. There's no disguising that. We're going to, we're going to work you hard here. And you're going to meet some terrific faculty. They're going to have high expectations. But the reason you're here is because we're confident you can meet those expectations. And if you do, you'll have lots of great career opportunities. 
But it's not just about return on investment in a monetary sense. The real question is, what do you want to do with that degree? And when I said, you know, somewhat jokingly, well, it's all about serving people and helping society and promoting the rule of law, there's actually quite a bit of truth to that. So we recently surveyed one of our 50th reunion graduating classes, and we asked them, what was the most valuable thing about your career in law? And this is a group of people that includes, you know, um, congressmen and ambassadors and politicians of various kinds, judges and managing partners of big law firms and general counsels at large corporations and people who've gone into business, people who have been very successful and made a great deal of money. And not a single one talked about the financial aspect of law. Even though they did very well, nobody said that was the most rewarding part of being a lawyer. So one person said, you know, it was helping uh, an elderly woman pre prepare herself to appear in small claims court. And someone else said it was giving advice to the President of the United States. And someone said it was helping a, a corporation solve a complex business transaction. So what people really found rewarding about the job, about the career, is that being a lawyer, is some, you're someone who solves problems. You're someone who helps other people. So you can do well while doing good in this career. And we think this law school will prepare you, naturally we think better than any other, but okay, it will certainly prepare you well. We really try to provide a legal education second to none. We want to make sure that when our graduates finish their three years here, they are prepared for all the range of career opportunities that will be open to you. And you'll hear a little bit about that from our students here. So that's our commitment. That's really what we want to achieve. We're constantly reviewing our curriculum to make sure that it provides that education. We've revamped some of our first year curriculum. We've added new capstone experiences, new clinics, new internships and externships of all kinds new pro bono opportunities, all kinds of things. We just had a case argued in the U.S. Supreme Court in January from one of our clinics. We have one of the strongest clinical programs in the country. So you'll get both the practical skills and the theoretical knowledge you need. And now really is the time to think about what do you want to do with that law degree. How many of you know? How many of you know what you want to do when you finish? Some of you? How many want to do private practice? A couple of people, don't be ashamed, raise your hand. Private practice is good. I did it for 10 years. Yeah, it's a good thing. Uh, anybody want to go into government? Yeah, nonprofits? You know, yeah. Uh, what am I missing? Anything else? Anything else, someone? How about uh, winning the World Series of Poker? Anyone? <laughs> so we actually have a graduate uh, who won the 2004 World Series of Poker, proving my point that law degree is valuable for many different career paths. <laughs> I'm certain he attributes his success to his training here in Mondell Hall. Well, welcome everybody. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. I look, I've, I've met some of you individually. I hope to meet all of you. I'll be at the lunch and I'll, I'll be there uh, looking and talking and I hope to get a chance to say hello to you in person. And until then, I want to uh, turn you over to our panel so you can get the real story about life at the law school. Thank you all and welcome. Thanks, Dean Whitman. Um, again, my name is Allie Hilding. I'm one of the admissions counselors today, and I'm going to be moderating the student leadership panel. But first, we have a few opening notes for you all. Um, so if you look in your book, that is going to be the program of the weekend. So a lot of good information is in there. Um, let us know if you have any questions about the book or about any of the agenda items. Bathrooms are by the elevators on all four floors of the law school. Um, we also gave you those metal water bottles, and you can fill those up at the water stations by the bathrooms. Also, we will have a snack table throughout the day during the breaks, right outside room 25. So if you ever need a little um, snack or a little drink, there'll be um, some out there for you. The bookstore is also open today until 2 o'clock. They have extra hour, special hours for us um, today till 2. So you should have received a bookstore coupon in your folder. Um, so feel free during lunch or during the breaks to go to the bookstore and get um, some cool Minnesota Law swag. Um, also, one note is tomorrow there's a Raise the Bar Day of Service. Um, our law council is putting that on, and it's a, an opportunity that admitted students are invited to to do community service work in Minneapolis. So if you're um, looking to do that, it's tomorrow from about 1 to 4. Um, there are a few spots available. So if you're interested in that, um, talk to me, and I can um, get you connected to the leaders of that. Um, but just a little community service event tomorrow afternoon. Um, and then our last note, I don't think he's here, but today is Nick Wallace's birthday. So if you see him, wish him a happy birthday, and I'm glad he gets to celebrate with all of his new friends. 
Okay, so let's turn it over to the student leadership panel. So we have Kari Ann Jones. She is the editor-in-chief of the Minnesota Law Review. She's also a co-president of the Women's Law Association, Student Association here at Minnesota Law. Sush Rajavan is the student director of the IP Moot Court. She's also the president of the Law Council and one of our admissions ambassadors. Kyle Kroll is an SSG instructor. I'm sure he'll tell you what SSG means. He is also in TORT, the theater of the relatively talentless, which is happening during the April campus preview. He's also an admissions ambassador and he's a student senator for the law school. And then we have Neil Mahoney, who is a student director of the National Moot Court. And during his 1L year, he was also the EVP for the Asylum Law Project. So a lot of great experience up here. Um, I'll start it off with a few questions and then it's really open to you if you have questions for the students. Ask about their student experiences, how they balance um, co-curriculars with academic work, things like that. So the first question that I'll pose is how did you get involved in the activities that you're involved in and how do they enhance your educational experiences? My first, my first, oh, can people hear me? Is this good? All right, great. Um, well, I'm, uh, uh, I'll tell you a little bit. There's a lot of ways to get involved here at the U. I've actually, I was an undergrad, actually, before I came to law school here. And um, the one thing I always uh, remembered was uh, how many student groups there were uh, that you could get involved in. I think there are around 800. I've been involved in, I think, over a handful of them in my time here, um, and some of them even in law school. I think it's actually very easy to get involved to just reach out to some of these student groups. You can look at which ones are out there um, on the law school's website, as well as at uh, sua.umn.edu, the student union's website. Um, and other ways that you can get involved beyond just kind of reaching out and asking, I think that's really the simplest way to do it, um, in a way that I, was, that I got involved right away. But you can run in a lot of different elections, and that's how I won the, uh, the student senator position that I have now. Um, I think when you come to law school, if you want to get involved, it's really just what you make of it. If you want to try to be involved uh, more than others, all you have to do is ask and volunteer to help out with something. And if you want to just be involved in one or two things and focus on that, you can do that as well. It's really up to you. Uh, so during your 1L year, you, there are a lot of lunches provided by um, different groups uh, in the law school and it's a really great opportunity to find out what area of law you're interested in um, so there will be different groups on like IP law business law uh, I was in the asylum law project which um, works with people seeking asylum in the US uh, I was also on the International Law Society so it's a very good opportunity to get access to different types of the law very early in your um, legal education Um, oh, this, okay, there we go. Um, just, um, apart from you know orgs putting on events, there's also an org fair at the beginning of your every school year, but definitely um, something to keep in mind at the beginning of your 1L year. And I remember I signed up for anything and everything that sounded interesting, from the Jewish Law Students Association to the Women's Law Students Association, and just put my name down and started going to events. Um, and then my 2L year, I whittled it down to orgs that I was really passionate about and wanted to take a leadership role in, and, and so on and so forth. So. I would say sign up for everything. I know it seems like you don't have the time for it, but just getting on a mailing list alone will will get you the email blast about events, but both uh, you know speakers as well as networking events that you can attend and get you famili familiar familiarized with um, that org and whether you want to continue on it. Um. So I came to law school wanting to do sort of women's rights work, so uh, getting involved with the Women's Law Student Association seemed like a pretty obvious choice for me. A lot of these organizations um, have 1L representatives, uh, so you can actually, if you want, sort of um, take a more active role in organizations you may know you want to be involved in. So I did the 1L representative, and that's how I be ended up becoming president, co-president of the Women's Law Student Association. <clears throat> but I would second everything they've said about just, you know, reaching out and trying to experience new things. Um, no, there are no lawyers in my family, uh, so I had no idea what law review was. Uh, people were talking about it at the beginning of 1L year, and I was like, oh, yeah, totally, law review, yeah, whatever. Um, 
but uh, you know, just talking to people and learning about journal experiences uh, made me realize I really wanted to be a part of it. Um, and I ended up becoming either editor in chief, and it's been one of the greatest experiences, if not the greatest experience, of my law school career. So really, taking the opportunity to learn about things you don't necessarily know. Um, I was to always googling words that other people seem to know, you know, like law review, and trying to figure out what they were. Um, but uh, it ended up working out really well for me. So. Well, why don't you tell us any advice that you have for incoming 1Ls, whether it's school-related, activity-related, or life-related? Any advice? Don't do any law-related work before <laughs> law school starts. Don't look at your textbooks until you get your readings. Don't do anything that will that you will look back and say, oh, I should have put that off to law school started. Because <laughs> once you're here, that's going to be your life. So take as much time as you can doing fun activities. And when you are in law school, too, take as much time as you can doing fun activities. I know it's going to seem like you need to be in the library or you need to make sure you are well ahead of all your readings, but you, you have the time to take, take time for yourself to go watch a movie, to go hang out with friends, and definitely do that or else you're going to, you're going to waste your three years here if you're just studying all the time. Um. Don't stress <laughs> uh, and don't compare yourself to other people. Everyone here has, um, all of my peers are super awesome and do cool things and um, you know everyone has their own path and I think it's really easy to, you get stressed out when you start comparing yourself to other people. Maybe I should be doing this, maybe I should be doing that. Um, and I think it, the experience is much better if you just kind of focus on what you're interested in, um, what you enjoy doing and learning about and just running with that. Yeah, I'd have to echo the don't stress part. I remember, um, uh, I remember the first like week of school. I think I, don't, I think there's like orientation for a few days or something. And the first day they said like dress business casual, and so I was like, okay, well I won't wear a coat, but I'll wear a tie. What does that mean? <laughs> I want to like I want to you know make a good impression. And then I was like, what tie do I wear? Do I wear a serious tie? Do I wear like a fun tie? <laughs> so I chose a fun tie, and it was a kangaroo tie. Um, <laughs> People still remember me for that, I guess. Uh, but uh, yeah, so don't stress about those things. I mean, just be who you are. In a sense, I guess I was kind of a kangaroo kind of person, maybe. I don't know. So I guess I, I followed through on that. But I think, too, you should, have a, you should just have a really open mind when you come into law school. Um, I, the first, you know, all of your classes are assigned, and some of you may already know what you want to do, and a lot of you um, seem to. But uh, I have never you know, taken torts before or criminal law and, or anything like that. And so um, I, I, think, I think you'll have a much better experience if, when you go into your first semester and into your, you know, go throughout your first year. Just keep an open mind about what you're learning about. Um, all of them actually, all the classes, all the substantive classes actually do have uh, learning that will be important no matter what you end up doing. Um, and so I would say just don't come in with any blinders on. You should all be freaking out. And you should, <laughs> you should definitely stress your 1L year. Um, it's expected. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, I would say the best advice is try to have uh, an organized lifestyle. Um, a few of my friends treat, treated law school like a job. They were here from 9 to 5 or 8 to 6, and then they just sort of shut themselves down. And I think it is important, like Sush said, to have something outside of law school to uh, you know, distract you, to balance you out. Um, yeah, and like Kyle said, I think a lot of, I would say 99% of you that think you know what you're going to do, that will change drastically. Uh, I came into law school wanting to do criminal law because both my parents are criminal defense attorneys, and I'll be practicing real estate. So, you know, you never know where you're going to go. So, um, yeah, just take in as much as you can because there's always something that might pique your interest and, uh, you know, change your future. So. I think I could add to, um Get involved. I mean, we're all involved. I don't know about you. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but um, being involved uh, with other law students um, and just the university at large for me too. Being involved with other professional and graduate students has been a really rewarding experience. I like meeting new people. 
And I like kind of making those connections. I think that's important, too, uh, to develop those soft skills that come with spending time with other people, working in teams with other people, being involved in student organizations. Because law is really, and a lot of people say this, it's really a people business. And so you have to be good with people, I think, in a lot of ways. Uh, not always, but, um, but I, I really have enjoyed being involved on campus. So I think I would, I would recommend, uh, I think Sush kind of mentioned that, or, uh, too, you know, that first First semester, there'll be some career fair or career fairs, uh, student org fairs. Try to get involved in something. I think you'll you'll uh, be happy you did. So two things. One, to go back to something Kyle said a minute ago, torts is another one of those words. I had no idea what it meant uh, when I came into law school. It's a one L class uh, about like personal injuries and stuff. Um, so just wanted to throw that one out there. Contract law, constitutional law, I could like figure those out, you know. But torts, I had no idea. I think um, it's a French word for wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, <laughs> I still don't know what it means. Um, and then the other thing I was just going to add is, you know, take risks. Um, I think some of the most successful people, I came in very, you know, I was sort of shy and anxious and I didn't know what I wanted to do and didn't know what torts meant. So, um, but, you know, I think the most successful people here are people who are willing to take risks, send emails to people you meet, um, you know, network, get involved. Um, and lots of opportunities sort of arise from places you wouldn't necessarily expect if you're willing to kind of put yourself out there a little bit. Well, and tort shouldn't be confused. Tort shouldn't be confused with tort. You know, the law school musical. Another really good thing to get involved with, which I recommend for everyone being part of it. Where are you? Also along the lines of what Carrie Ann was saying, I mean, we have a really great culture at the law school here where people are remarkably friendly and remarkably kind. And it's something that you carry with you, not just through the three years here, but also once you graduate and you're working. So wherever you go to law school, which hopefully I'll be here because it's such a nice place, <laughs> um, I hope you, you remember that that the people that are sitting next to you in your classes are the people that are going to be your colleagues, they're the people that are going to be your business cards um, that will be recommending you to future clients. And so make an impression, don't, don't I guess, don't be that person, don't be that kid in class. <laughs> don't be a jerk, uh, be nice, be kind, be willing to help out when someone's sick or someone has missed class. And that, would, that will go a long way in not only making another person's law school experience good, but also will improve your quality of life in a weird way. So it, it spurs the culture. And that's something I've seen at this law school here all three years that I've been here. It's just been remarkably, I should say it's been a pleasant surprise to see how, how wonderful people have been. And I know I will remember the people that helped me years to come. And we'll try to send some business along. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I saw something in the Star Tribune the other day about the uh, former dean, I guess for now former dean of Hamlin, besmirching the U for uh, being cutthroat, which is not the case at all. Um, I think there's uh, something implied that people are ultra competitive in law school everywhere, but especially at the University of Minnesota compared to places like Mitchell or St. Thomas. And that was not even close to the experience that I had. Everybody is very helpful. Um, it's kind of like you're all in it together. It's like you're all going through this torture together, so you <laughs> have to hang on. Uh, I hate to admit that uh, during undergrad, I didn't read everything that was assigned, <laughs> uh, but now I do, um, and I think that might be a change for some people, uh, certainly. You do have to go through all the material, and I think that can take a lot more time than you're used to in undergrad. It, de it depends on maybe what you, what you study, um, and especially if you did something that's not like a kind of writing intensive in undergrad, that's going to be very different too, because uh, the long is usually in includes a lot of writing, a lot of reading, and so I would say that will be different. Um, so time, reading, oh, and I think too um, the sheer amount of uh, the 
the amount of studying you do will probably increase as well for exams. I mean, after all, I remember in undergrad, I was a business student here at the U, and, um, and usually it wasn't the case that your entire grade was based on one exam, but in, in almost every law school, that is the case uh, for most of their classes, uh, and certainly for most of the classes I've had here. And so you'll probably start to, uh, you'll have to adapt your studying habits so that you are prepared to talk about all the material at the end, which will require you to, I think, keep up to date and practice with the material over time. So that might change too if you haven't been doing that. So how many of you are current college seniors right now? All right, enjoy your senioritis while it lasts. <laughs> that was the toughest thing for me. I came directly from undergrad and I was just so not ready to jump back into work. And then you get pretty back into work. Very, we get, I guess, shoved back into work <laughs> really it's quickly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, I think for me, it's just, it was a mentality thing. In, in undergrad, you have, again, multiple exams. So if you don't do so well on exam, you can just study a little bit harder next time and, and pull up your grade. But you don't, you don't have that safety net here. Um, at the same time, I mean, especially as, as first years, pe people tend to stress about readings and about work and sometimes spend too much time on it. I mean, I always say it's important to figure out how to study smart as opposed to study hard. And if you have a rhythm going, if you have a great system going, don't worry about how much time someone else is spending on their reading. Don't worry about how much, how many flash cards someone else has made. I mean, focus on what you can do. Um, and that's something that's gonna take, get, take some you getting used to because you're, you're going to see other people spending their time in the library all day, every day. You're going to see other people stressing about things that are months ahead, and you need to know what's best for you. And that takes a, a certain level of understanding of yourself to do. Uh, so I, on the other hand, came from two years uh, of work. I was at U.S. Bank before this. So I was really excited to come back to the library <laughs> and, and start reading again. Um, I thought that compared to, it depends on your, the rigor of your undergrad and what degree you got there. Um, I was used to reading a lot. I, a lot of my classes in undergrad just had one exam and one paper. So it was, it was a fairly smooth transition. And like I said, it was, I didn't have that senioritis. I'm getting it kind of now. I'm less excited <laughs> about reading, getting so close to graduation. But it depends on, uh, you know, where you went. And um, yeah, Susha has good advice about studying smart because you can read a case seven times and if you're not really looking for the right thing or um, going through the process in an efficient way, you just end up spinning your wheels. And that's something you learn as you go through 1L. Uh, so don't, don't worry if you don't get it right away. But. Yeah, I, oh, do you want to go, Karian? <laughs> I'll add something quick. Um, so I think, too, one big difference that uh, I can think of is that uh, in undergrad, I felt a lot of my exams were kind of focused on facts. So, um, you know, like, when did this occur, or what happened, or, or what about this business, or something like that. Um, whereas in law school, it's, uh, you know, obviously there are uh, facts, there are rules you need to learn about the law. Uh, but most of, I think, your success in law school will be on how well you can uh, analyze problems. Um, and Dean Whitman talked about how lawyers are problem solvers, and I think that's definitely the case for on exams, that you're going to be asked to be a problem solver. And so that might change, too, what kinds of things you'll be practicing, not just kind of rote memorization of things, but getting uh, used to using the material. Um. Like Neil, I, uh, I didn't come straight from undergrad. I got a master's degree first. Um, I think the biggest thing that was sort of a, a shock for me is, um, you know, when you go through undergrad and, and in grad school even more so, you're kind of around, you're constantly around a bunch of people who th sort of think like you and are interested in the same things. Um, you know, for me it was, well, it doesn't matter, English. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then you come here and you're in a section with, you know, 30 to 40 people and people are coming from all different backgrounds, um, from science backgrounds and, you know, political science backgrounds, history, you know, economics, whatever. Um, and that can be a little bit of a, an adjustment, at least it was for me, to sort of learn how to interact with people and how people sort of think differently based on their backgrounds. Um, that took some getting used to, but it actually is a really cool 
facet of law school, I think, because you get to look at these same problems and talk with people who have such different perspectives. So it maybe takes a little bit of adjusting, but I think it's a really rewarding educational experience as a result. Any other questions that anyone has? Yeah, go ahead, in the brown. Um, basically, uh, three L's get first choice, and then so it's kind of confusing. But you you just you rank like I don't know 12, 12 classes that you want to take in order from one to twelve, and then the lottery system goes through and randomly picks randomly picks your name from first three L's and then two L's, or I guess first rising three L's and then rising two L's. Um, and you get your first choice if it's still available. If it's not, then you, it goes down to your second choice. Or if you already have a class conflict, it'll go down to your third choice. And it kind of just works that way. And so it goes through the older students first and then the, and then the second. I don't know if that was very clear. But. OK, good. <laughs> I just put things in, and then I get a class schedule. So. Um. But the great thing is, for some reason, if you don't get a class that you really wanted during the lottery system, you're waitlisted, first of all. And a lot of people move around their classes after the first and second week based on whether they get off the waitlist for another class they really wanted, or if they just have a new schedule from work, or whatever reason. They, if they end up dropping a class, it's highly likely that you can still get off the waitlist if you're relatively high up. Now, some classes are more difficult to get into than others. Um, but in general, most people I've known have been able to get off the wait list for classes that they really wanted. Uh, so I really disliked criminal law, <laughs> which had a big impact. Um, I still wanted to litigate, too. So uh, my, the summer after my 1L year, I worked at the Minneapolis City Attorney's Office and did a lot of civil cases about um, police abuse. And I defended the police, but you know, don't crucify me yet. Um, and I just really didn't like it. Uh, it seemed fickle to me. There was nobody was happy, whatever the result was. Um, whereas in real estate, you build something, so that's great, and you can see it. Uh, so that was kind of the changing point for me, and something that I wouldn't really uh, have known if I didn't have access to uh, certain civil practice things here. Uh, the business law clinic really confirmed that I want to do transactional law. You get the opportunity here to go through a lot of different stages of um, practical hands-on experience, which really helps in pushing you towards the right spot. Uh, for me, it was, um, it was a class and the professor who taught the class. I really, really enjoyed the uh, material that we were learning about and um, really enjoyed the professor. So I looked him up and saw what he did before he came to be a professor and thought, well, that looks cool. I could do that. Um, and then got the opportunity to do that um, last summer and really, really enjoyed it. So. Um, I came in. Uh, I guess Sush uh, didn't experience this. Uh, <laughs> good on her. Um, I came in kind of thinking I wanted to do business topics, and I still am. But uh, as, as has been thrown around, I don't know if a lot of you have thought about it, but generally that people put lawyers into two categories. You either do litigation kinds of work or transactional kind of work. And there are other categories. But um, And I came in actually not knowing which one, so um, maybe you like a certain area, you just don't know what kind of lawyer you want to be in that area, and so that was my situation, and um, I thought, I don't, I don't know, I didn't know if I wanted to do like big mergers and acquisitions, or, or if I wanted to litigate a case against someone, or defend, or whatever, <clears throat> and and then I had contracts, <laughs> and uh, and I also worked. Uh, f I still work actually for a small law firm in St. Paul, and um, did a bunch of contracts with them. Still do, and uh, I find that I I find it kind of tedious. It's just my 
personal uh, experience with it. Some people really love it, um, but I, I haven't. And um, in taking other classes that have more case law associated with them, and then also now being in uh, the civil practice clinic, I get to see more of the litigation aspects of things, and I find that that's what I'd really like to do. And so I think um, your experiences at law school will help you discern what path you'd like to take. Um, most students uh, don't work during one all year and it's highly recommended that you don't because you have such a heavy course load and you're still getting used to you know understanding how the law works and how to do your work for law school so most people don't um, I don't I didn't have a job and no one I knew had a job um, I would definitely recommend against it I had a job. <laughs> I, would, I would totally agree. I mean, um, I worked 10 hours a week at the Advocates for Human Rights, which is this um, organization downtown, my second semester. Um, and I did it because I was, I, I just kind of wanted to get out of the law school for like a few minutes, a, you know, a week, and um, sort of see some of these things in practice a little bit. Um, I thought 10, I worked like somewhere in the 8 to 12 hour range. I thought that was pretty manageable for me to do. Um, but I, I wouldn't suggest working working more than that. Um, yeah. But most people don't. And I would say you probably should, or maybe you should. A lot of people actually end up getting jobs their 2L years. Because um, by then you have a better handle of things. So you can manage your schedule a little bit better and hopefully get Friday or Thursday off. So you have a little bit more time to actually spend on the job. Well, and maybe some of you will be involved on campus and that you could kind of think of that as like a job in terms of time commitment. <laughs> a lot of us are pretty involved. We probably would say it's a little bit like a job. I did have a job, still do. I've had the same job throughout all of law school so far, um, working for a law firm. I only do a few hours a week, so it's really not that hard to manage. Um, I know the ABA says you shouldn't work more than 10 hours a week, I believe, so Kariyam was at the max, uh, pushing it to the max. Uh, but, uh, but I think people do it uh, and, and they've been able to manage it. I think especially if you, and I don't know, this is kind of funny, but if you treat law school like a job, then you can maybe have another job. <laughs> um, maybe you don't want to think of having two jobs in that way, but if you manage your time well, you can probably make it work, but it'll be, diff it'll be more difficult. And the question you have to ask yourself is whether you want to put yourself in that situation. You know, is, it wor is the 10 hours a week worth it if it might end up leading uh, to you not doing as well in law school? And so I, you have to balance those considerations, but it, but it is doable. So I want to jump in right away uh, <laughs> because, um, uh, as Ali mentioned, I'm an SSG instructor. So you probably don't know what that is. SSG stands for Structured Study Group. It's something um, that's unique to our law school. It's, it's kind of like, I, I guess I'm kind of like a TA for your class, but my job in, each of, in most of your classes will have someone assigned and they'll have se sessions on a regular basis where we'll go through and help you with those strategies. So you're not all on your own. You're not left uh, out to dry and try to figure it out yourself. There are people uh, like me who, um, have had success in law school can help you with that and from the beginning. But yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, outlines are a big process for a lot of people. And generally what that means is you're taking everything that you're learning over the semester and synthesizing it into one document that goes through all of the considerations you have to make in looking at a problem. Uh, and I know that's very abstract. Um, I wouldn't worry about it now, but, uh, but again, you know, the SSG and instructors and even I think uh, other students will help you with that process. Um, kind of goes to Susha's point earlier about people not being too competitive. No one's in the library ripping pages out of, you know, horn books or anything. Um, and so, and people are pretty, co uh, have a collegial feel here. So they're willing to help you with that. So I've been an orientation leader the last two years. And at orientation, we address finals. And this is what we tell all of our incoming students. Do not worry about it right now. <laughs> Don't think about it. It's there. It's in the, in the distant future. <laughs> 
and don't think about it right now. Outlines, when you get to law school, someone will explain it to you how to study. People will give you strategies, and you can figure it out based on what your own personal um, style is. But right now, you're still figuring out what law school is and how to do your readings on a daily basis. So don't think about finals. Just put it in a box and put it away. <laughs>